Hey guys, welcome back. I got a super exciting video for you today. I'm going to be talking about the most budget cinematic lens I have ever used. Let's get into it. So today we're talking about the Sure anamorphic 35mm lens. Now I love this lens, I've had this lens now for a few weeks and I've been throwing in a bunch of different scenarios and it is a wonderful lens. Let's just talk about anamorphic. What is anamorphic in case you don't know? Now you've definitely seen anamorphic on films, loads of films use anamorphic. You're ever watching a film on your TV and you get those black bars at the top and the bottom? Much like you're seeing right here, right now, because I am filming this on the Sure 35 anamorphic. So you see these black bars right here? That is anamorphic. Now, sometimes people won't shoot anamorphic and they'll just crop the image. But anamorphic basically gives you a wider field of view. Now, anamorphic lenses were created to basically what they do is they squeeze the image. So they squeeze that wide image onto a 35 millimeter frame. And that was done to make full use of the frame so you weren't losing these black bars at the top and the bottom. So they would squash the image so that it was more of a square than as long as it is. And then afterwards in post, you would stretch that image back out. You wouldn't lose resolution and it was just a more efficient way of recording the image. So you've seen this before, you've seen it in a ton of your films that you've, you've been watching over the years. Now, I love anamorphic. Now, why do I love anamorphic? Because it reminds me of films that I watched growing up. I don't know, you just like, when you're growing up and you're watching films, you start to associate the look and the feel of those films with being a film. So, you know, when I started to study film and started making films, you're looking at ways that you can make your films look more like the films you watched growing up. You know, whether that's shooting on film, anamorphic lenses, whatever that is. So, you know, up until this point, anamorphic for me and my filmmaking journey had always been unattainable because budget anamorphic lenses for the longest time only came in PL mount, which is, you know, associated with cinema cameras. And anamorphic lenses always cost a lot to rent. You know, they were way more than spherical lenses, probably because they were in high demand. They were really only used on bigger budget stuff. So when it came time to renting kit, they always cost like twice, three times as much than a normal lens to rent. So a lot of the time it just wasn't in the budget. Now, in the past six years, I'm lucky enough to have worked on films that had a budget that could get anamorphic lenses. Now, really fond memory for me is going to a kit house in London and we got to try basically all the lenses they had. And I took my Ursa Mini Pro at the time and we spent the entire day just going through the lenses, trying all these different lenses. And during that test, I got to try a bunch of anamorphic lenses because when else was I going to get time to try these anamorphic lenses? And we tried a range of what they had. And I remember trying the Ari Master Prime anamorphic lenses. They were big. They were like that long, chunky lenses. Like they were bigger than this camera even. And the lens combined probably. And they were heavy, you know. So if you were putting your camera on a steady cam or a gimbal, like that was going to max out your weight because it was basically the weight of the camera again. Now they look stunning. Don't get me wrong, they, they're amazing. I would love to use those lenses. We tried some more budget friendly lenses that they had. It was really an amazing test to just see the difference and um, like different lenses make on your image, you know? I really hadn't realized until that test just the difference that a lens can make. It can almost make as much difference as the camera makes, crazily. So I had always wanted to use anamorphic lenses. It's always been a dream of mine and you know, I used them on a few projects renting and in the past few years, anamorphic lenses have become more affordable. Now, they always used to be PL mount and PL mount associated with cinema cameras. Recently over the years, more manufacturers have started to make different mounts. Now the Sure 35mm lens is RF mount. So I've been using it on my Red Komodo. You can get E mount, L mount, I think another mount, no EF mount, unfortunately, but there are other options out there. I know Great Joy make a um, range of anamorphic lenses and they come in EF mount, PL mount, E mount, so on. So I love the fact that over the past, like, you know, three, four years, these anamorphic lenses have started cropping up. And, you know, I think before maybe three, four years ago, there were some, but they were still quite expensive. But these ones, crazy price of only 4 dollars 
Now, £499, uh, I think, in the UK, and I think the price doesn't differ that much in America. I think maybe it's a little bit more expensive, but it's still around the $500 mark. And that is not only cheap for anamorphic, that's cheap for a, a lens, really. And it's crazy to me. And, you know, some of the other variations, the 50mm, the 24, are even cheaper. I think the the 50 mil is on sale on Amazon right now for like 450. It's kind of crazy. You know, I'd love to go out and buy more of these lenses, but I can't afford it right now. But I am going to try and get some of these lenses to test in an upcoming video. I'd love to shoot something on these anamorphics. So keep, remember to like and subscribe because that's definitely happening because this is honestly, I've put this lens in a bunch of different scenarios now, a bunch of different situations, and in every one of them, I'm loving it. I love the look of this lens. It feels so cinematic to me. It just looks beautiful. It makes everything just have that extra filmic quality. Um, you might disagree. I'm not gonna sit here and say that anamorphic lenses alone are gonna make your films look like a film. There is so much that goes into making a film look and feel like a film. So many departments, more than just the camera department. You know, for me, a big, big department that make a, a big difference, production design, because they fill your image with all these different things that make the image look interesting. And, you know, always get a good relationship as a cinematographer with your production design and person, because they can really help you out in making your films just, and making the frame look better. Hopefully in the next, you know, few weeks, I'm going to put together a video on top tips to make your films look more like a film. So remember to subscribe for that one. Um, and also if that's what you wanna see, let me know in the comments because I always love getting comments on these videos. Any questions, drop them in the comments. Now, different anamorphic lenses come in different squeeze factors. This is a 1.33 squeeze factor. So that's gonna make a difference to you depending on a number of factors. For instance, the red camera de-squeezes in camera. That's great because when you bring it to the edit, it's already de-squeezed. Now with a lot of anamorphic lenses and depending on the camera you're using them on, may not do that. You may need to de-squeeze the, the image in an external monitor or maybe it just won't have your squeeze factor. So for instance, a good example of that was I owned the Great Joy 50mm and that was a 1.8 squeeze factor. The Pocket 6K that I was using it on did offer de-squeeze options, but it didn't offer 1.8. It offered 1.3, 2 and so on. So I had to de-squeeze to get a, you know, an actual representation of what the image would look like with the external monitor. Now I did that with the Atomos Ninja 5. That gives you various de-squeeze options. So it's something to be aware of when you're buying your lens and what camera you're using it on, how you're gonna deal with that. Now, this lens, 133, is a very, you know, the, kind of the standard. A lot of PL mount lenses I've used are 1.3. So the Alexa Mini, for instance, that'll do the de-squeeze for you and stuff. You still, with the Alexa Mini, you, you have to de-squeeze in post. Now, depending on the post-production program you're using, I use Adobe Premiere that will also give you de-squeeze options. Now, it does offer 1.3 as, you know, when you go to modify, interpret footage, and then your aspect, you can change the aspect there so that rather than having to resize it in your settings, you can do it there. Now, Premiere doesn't offer all of the different ranges, so that's something, again, to be aware of in the edit program you're using. Now, you can just de-squeeze manually, and there's a great website that I use. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. And that website was made by a guy called Tito. Really useful, has a bunch of information there on anamorphic lenses if you're planning on shooting anamorphic. Check it out and it'll give you all your de-squeeze factors. Now, the only real complaint I have with this lens, and uh, you know, it's what it is, is I would love it if this focused a little closer. Um, I think the closest focus dif um, distance is over a foot. So it can't focus super close. Now, there are ways that you can get around that. You can use something like this. This is basically a little screw on filter and it allows you to focus on something closer. Now, there are issues with using these things. They're gonna affect your focus marks. You know, it's not gonna line up with what's on the barrel and also it's gonna affect your um, furthest focus. So depending on which one you use, it's probably unlikely you're gonna to get to infinity focus. But if you just want them for a shot, perfectly good. They are gonna make things quite shallow 
um, a little bit dreamy, but maybe it's a good effect. But there are ways that you can obviously focus a little bit closer. Now, I'd love to see on some of the other models what the closest focus is. I know I think 24 is much closer. So that is one I would love to try. But yeah, my only complaint with this lens is that it doesn't focus as close as I would like it. And that's only because I love getting the camera right in the actor's face, getting that real nice close shot. So I'm gonna put a bit of a montage now to show you some of the really nice stuff I've shot over the past few days. I hope you enjoy it. Any questions about this lens or even shooting anamorphic, drop them in the comments, you know, any questions at all. Yeah, if you're thinking about shooting anamorphic and you're, you know, maybe the budget is low, I'm sure you can rent these for pretty cheap as well and there's you know they're very accessible so if up until now you were like I'm thinking about making that plunge and I'm, I'm not quite sure then do it because I love these lenses put a link to the lenses down below if you want to buy them and yeah I hope you enjoy the rest of the video remember like and subscribe we're growing that audience slowly but it's getting there thanks for watching guys really appreciate it see you on the next one